People, the headlines, the issues impacting you, all on This Week in Cincinnati on 9 in Your Side. Welcome back, everyone. This morning we are talking about the case of Father Jeff Drew with the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. And as we mentioned in the previous segment, he now faces nine counts of rape and he has pled not guilty. Authorities say the incidents took place between 1988 and 1991 when the boy was 10 and 11 years old. With me right now to talk about all of this from the Archdiocese is Jennifer Shack. She is Director of Media Relations for the Archdiocese. Jennifer, thank you for coming in and spending some time with us. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. So let's start at the start. Father Drew worked in the church for many years as a lay person. He knows a music director before entering the priesthood, becoming a priest. Did the Archdiocese ever have an inkling prior to him entering the priesthood that there were any situ situations that might make anyone uncomfortable. Right, so there's no documentation that there's problems before he goes into the priesthood. And when you go into the priesthood, there's an extensive amount of evaluations. In 1999, when he entered an extensive amount, there's even more now. So uh, there was nothing problematic raising flags then and enters the priesthood like anyone else would at that point. Okay, so where, how this really all started was a few weeks ago when there was an out when St. Ignatius had him removed mm -hmm. because there was an allegation that he contacted an, uh, a child inappropriately. There is no proof that anything else happened beyond that. So uh, the Archbishop removed him okay. as pastor at that point. So St. Ignatius, you know, yes, not sorry. knowing that was going. That's okay, I just wanna make sure we're clear. Um, well, why was it that the Archdiocese allowed Father Drew to self-monitor when they knew coming from St. Maximilian in Butler County from Prosecutor Mosier up there, right. that there was something to be concerned with here. So we knew that there were the red flags that had come in. Um, they were addressed in the form of conversations with him where you are know, making people uncomfortable. We ask you not to do this. He says, I don't know I'm making them uncomfortable. I can stop doing that. So um, as allegations came into us in 2013 and in 2015, they were sent to Butler County Prosecutor, as you noted. They were not criminal in nature. Discussions were made with, were had with him. He acknowledged his behavior. He said he would stop. Um, years go by without any reports. It was absolutely a failing on our part that we don't follow up with him to say, have you stopped this? Or we don't investigate on our own at that point. Why are you doing these things? Is there more? Maybe it's not criminal, but is there more something going on? So those were faults of ours. How does it then lead to him being at St. Maximilian? His request to go to that parish based on where he's from he tells us in the application that his aging mother is in that area. He wants to move to that type of parish or a parish in that location, and he applies. So it's not a matter of uh, we had problems with him here. Let's move him there. That's absolutely not something you, that goes through the Did you mean St. Ignatius? Processes. You said St. Maximilian. When he, did you mean he applied to go to St. Ignatius? Ignatius, okay. yes. I'm sorry, yes. Um, Still, I think some parishioners, especially at St. Ignatius and certainly some at St. Maximilian would say, but why but, would you allow someone who has a, a, a history or an allegation or concerns to even be around children so, at all? So that is, again, a mistake on our part of there's no place a priest needs to be able to serve every person, all ages and be in full ministry. The fact that he had a restriction to, we asked him to limit his interaction with children is wrong. That's not, he's not able to be a priest if he's doing that. So that's another area that can't be repeated and won't happen again. A priest is either gonna be able to serve everyone as they are called to do from God, or they're not gonna be able to be active in ministry at the time. So again, a mistake on our part that he should not have been monitored or be limited in his role as a priest. Uh, having said that, it is also noted that he arrives at St. Ignatius as the pastor is named the pastor, and it's after he's at St. Ignatius that he's asked to limit his exposure, uh, limit his contact with children. So that was not part of his previous uh, parts at St. Maximilian Colby. He wasn't limited before uh, at St. Max and then moved to St. Ignatius. Okay, so at, after he's at St. Ignatius, he's then asked to limit his exposure to children. Right. Yet that information is not passed on to the principal of the school right. with the largest parish yeah in this Largest entire school. state. In the state, right. So what, where's the breakdown there? What, whose feet does that fall at? So the leave of absence that should have happened, should have started when the, we received the allegation, the, the letter in August of 2018 that prompted the Butler County Prosecutor uh, Mosier to do the investigation at that point. The leave of absence should have started then, period. You know, it wouldn't have been a matter of telling the principal or who to tell or how to monitor and all those things. 
uh, going forward, if that was a lay person, there would have been a leave of absence immediately. In this situation, there was not, and it should have been. So going forward, a couple of the faults of a priest cannot be in ministry unless fully active in ministry, and a priest cannot be in ministry if there's any allegation that he needs to be investigated with who will need to go on a leave of absence. You talk so. about that 2018 letter, and that, this is the one I have it in front of me. It's the red flag letter that a lot of people are referring to, and it's written by a, a lay person um, in the church, and it's essentially talking about Virtus, which is right. this program that all parents must go through if they want to participate in school activities. Parents, volunteers, right. teachers, and clerics. Which asks them to be you know, very transparent about their relationship right. with children, et cetera, et cetera, and they're saying, you've asked us, to, this is to Bishop Binzer specifically, I personally know of several parishioners that have come to you, Bishop Binzer, expressing deep concerns about this person, Father Drew. As a lay person, I'm required to read and respond monthly to these Virtus bulletins. And then it goes, we've talked about these red flags. So what are we supposed to do? They were brought to your attention on many occasions and your response was to place Father Drew in a parish with the largest Catholic grade school in the state. And so you understand the anger. You hear oh, the anger from I, parishioners here, don't you? Yeah, I, I don't hear to in any way say that they're not justified. I mean, there are, there are plenty of ways that I'm here to apologize on behalf of, of the archdiocese uh, for things that have gone wrong. So, uh, and to recognize that changes need to be made so that they don't go wrong again. So um, I know this letter writer and, and we've talked a couple of times and she knows that we're working towards doing the best we can to fix these problems. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and we do recognize that the point of Virtus is for, it, is for volunteers, for teachers, for coaches, and for clerics, for priests themselves to be, make sure that they're uh, in line with what we need, need for children to be safe. Um, and in saying that, it, it's important that the red flags, although not criminal, still need to be treated as a violation of the decree. And, all people uh, who are in accordance with that decree need to stand behind it, so. I think what uh, my people who I know who are um, parishioners would say, would at, want me to ask is this question. You're sitting here saying how sorry you are for on behalf of the archdiocese. I think they'll be th glad to hear that. But they wanna know, does the archdiocese all the way up to the archbishop get it now? Do they get it that this is not acceptable? Yeah, the question is, how do you fix the perception that this happened again? And I can say a couple of things to speak of the uh, level of concern for those of us who are working through this and are recognizing the problems that, that we've made um, and the importance of getting it right. Um, I can say with as much certainty, uh, with personal integrity, that we understand the need for people to know what happened. So I'm happy to be here to do what we can to get that information out. Um, I think it's important we're doing our best to be to communicate as effectively as we can. We're working with parishes, the parish communications teams, the parish outreach through their bulletin, uh, the parishes visiting them themselves. We visited two of the parishes so far where Father Drew has been a pastor. We'll visit St. Rita on Thursday, September 5th in Dayton where he was a pastor as well. The Archbishop will be present for that as well. So, um, you know, I can assure you that I work with all of the people involved in this situation and have been a part of a lot of this and uh, we're working just to reach individuals who are reaching out to us. I will call you back if you call me. It may take a little bit, but. Um, uh, Have you been updated? Oh yeah, there's plenty of, there's plenty of emotion, obviously, and, and hard emotions that people are going through. The lay people who are confused, um, we as what have we done wrong and what can we do to fix this? Um, and especially this week with the indictment, it just adds obviously a lot more hard emotions to it. Um, and we're very cognizant of that. In addition to communication efforts, uh, transparency efforts, apologies that need to be made, um, we also actively pray for all those who've been uh, victimized, um, this situation and others. And in addition, last year we started the Day of Prayer for Victims of Abuse. We already had that in motion to do it again this year, uh, and we will be doing it again this year on September 13th. So um, we're doing our best, and if other people have ideas, send them to us of what we can do to help out more. We do have more questions for you, Jennifer. I figured you probably knew that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly go to break. We're gonna come back with a few more questions for Jennifer Schack, who is from the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. Stay with